This week on Total Outdoor Pursuit, we're going to be heading out salmon and steelhead fishing. I mean, we've caught these fish before, so we're going to do this self-guided. At least that was the original plan until that plan fell apart. Plan B, we're going out with Captain Todd Brill from Gold Coast Fishing Company on the St. Joseph River. He knows how to put fish in the boat. Apparently fish wake up really early in the morning, so we're all getting ready. We've met here at Stony Creek Wildlife Studio. We're gonna head up, go slaughter some salmon. But first, we're gonna kill about 10 cups of coffee. Nick, Mike, and I have been going out for years fishing the tributaries of Lake Michigan, catching salmon, steelhead. Well, I shouldn't necessarily say catching. I mean, sometimes we have good luck and sometimes we don't. Yeah, I have been with Marty before when we caught a fish. A fish. So we figure, hey, Let's head up there, we'll make a quick episode, show some people how to catch salmon and steelhead. The only problem is we don't really know how to ourselves that well. Okay, we're back here at the secret fishing spot. We only lost part of one pole on the way and a whole bunch of skin on the thorns, but we're here, we're ready to start fishing. Kind of, let me get my rig all ready to go here. Perfect. Last night I tied about 14 spawn bags up. We'll start with that and that should cover us to about 25 salmon or so. And if we're still wanting to fish after then, I'll tie some more. I think we'll be wore out after 25 salmon though. Yeah, I think so too, because that'll be 50 years from now. All right, so basically our rig is, we've got a three-way swivel up at the top there. And off of that, we got a little dropper with a few split shot. Runs down to a hook. This hook is way overkill. It's just what I happened to have on when I was king salmon fishing up north. I'm too lazy to take it off. I might switch it here as we progress though. So I'm just gonna toss it out, basically just let it drift down with the current. Try and get it as close to log jams and things like that as possible. And hope that there's a big steely or a big king salmon waiting in there. So far drift and spawn hasn't been panning out, so before we hit the road and try a different spot, I've got one more setup I'd like to try. Well, I've went ahead and switched to an inline spinner. Just gonna try and cover hey, a little Marty, bit. Hey, Marty, I've actually, I've got, that, I've got this one this time. Oh, um, hey. When fishing in Northern Indiana for the uh, Salmonus Kingus Americanus, it's uh, common to use uh, kind of like a spoon spinner bait, rooster tail guy here. And uh, you're really gonna be fishing for, uh, for cover. You're gonna be looking for branches and holes in the in the bottom of the river. You're gonna be looking for bends in the river, anywhere those those fish can really pool up. And you're gonna to wanna to cast out about at one o'clock with uh, the river going this way. We're gonna cast downstream a little bit about to our one o'clock. We're gonna just retrieve that lure nice and steady. You wanna make sure that that spoon is always spinning in the water like that. So other people know how to fish too. Same. Salmon Americanus. King Salmon Americanus, no, Northern Americanus, actually. Um, I just have a wealth of salmon knowledge that I have memorized. Hmm. Um, the Chinook Salmon, named for the uh, uh, Chinook people that used to inhabit this area is uh, one of the largest species uh, of the Pacific Span uh, Spanish, the spe specific salmon that we're fishing for. Probably didn't know that. Pacific. 
Hmm. I learn something new with you every time, Nick. Yeah, stick with me, Marty. You'll get it down. Mm -hmm. So the guys were getting a little disappointed that they hadn't caught anything, but something told me it was probably for the best. So Marty and Nick brought us out here to the river, right by a bunch of factories, and they're fishing. Not having much luck, and as we were walking through the woods, uh, I just found this. Check out Total Outdoor Programming on YouTube for more great tips and tactics on hunting, fishing, camping, grilling, trophy field care, taxidermy tips, and even more. Plus you can watch full episodes of Total Outdoor Pursuit and even extras, outtakes, and bloopers off the cutting room floor. Come on, Rock! You bum! You bum, Rock! Here they come! Here they come! Are they? Be sure to subscribe and join in on the conversations. <laughs> Check it out at youtube.com backslash Total Outdoor. You can get a hold of the Total Outdoor Pursuit and Total Outdoor Programming team through social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates on where we're at and what we're chasing. We love hitting the road and trying new things. If you excel at any type of hunting or fishing, whether you're a professional guide or just average Joes like us, and you would like to be part of an episode teaching us what you know, send us an email at totaloutdoorpursuit at gmail.com and maybe you'll be in a future episode. If you want to put more furs on the stretcher, be sure to check out a new approach to coyote trapping and a new approach to coon trapping by Jason Hauser. Jason has filled these books with his decades of experience trapping for a living. As an outdoor writer for numerous major hunting and trapping magazines, the information is clear, concise, and packed full of great tips and lessons learned. For a new perspective on trapping techniques, check out a new approach to coyote trapping and a new approach to coon trapping by Jason Hauser. But when you're having a hard time figuring out what the fish are biting on, one of the best things you can do is go out and look for other fishermen, talk to them, maybe get some tips. So we're going to head out to the harbor where there's usually a lot of people fishing to see if we can't pick up some info. Alright, so we came out here to the pier just to kind of get a feel for the situation and uh, look around. Not a whole bunch of fishermen out here today. The good thing about technology today is when there's nobody out there to talk to, you can just call up the fishing report hotline. $9.99 a minute. First two minutes are free. That's how they get you. Indiana Department of Natural Resources Division of Fish and Wildlife, St. Joe River Fishing Hotline. This is up-to-date fishing information for the week of October 17th through October 24th. Trout and salmon continue to move into Indiana waters of the St. Joe River. As of October 14th, a total of 4,986 salmon have been counted moving past the South Bend Fish Lab. This includes 3,756 steelhead, 167 chinooks, 1,063 cobo, and one brown trout. Southern I'm getting it. The brown <laughs> trout's mine, dude. Dibs. <laughs> well, according to the fishing reports, the place to be was the St. Joseph River. So it's time to pack in the car and head that direction. We switched rivers. Um, supposedly the uh, steelhead are hitting this river pretty hard. There's some chinooks starting to hit it, so we're going to swing out here and give it a try. We also heard there's one brown trout around too, so maybe we'll try and get him also. We got there and it was the most beautiful spot we'd seen all day. It looked like a scene out of a movie, like a river runs through it or something, minus all of the fish.
All right, well, spot number two is kind of a dud as well, so I think we're gonna move up river a little bit closer to the dam. They've got to stop somewhere, so we'll give it a try there and see if they've made it that far. Just keep moving, keep fishing, see if we can find them. That's the way it goes. Well, here we are again, on the road. Where are we again? <laughs> are we here again? We're here again already? All right, so here we are at our, hopefully our, our last successful stop in Mishawaka. What is this, is stop number five or six? Something like We've that. covered probably 50 miles worth of river at this point. We've been driving since four in the morning and I think we've been in the car more than we've been on the river, but if they're here, we're gonna find them. Last try. This is another dam. They're gonna have to stop somewhere. This is it. Gonna grab the net. <laughs> no, no nets, no coolers, no buckets, no stringers. Yes. Definitely the net because we are going to land a fish right there. Look yeah. at that. There goes that we're idea. Landing a fish. As my great grandpappy used to say, uh, show up prepared, leave with nothing. Uh, so we we are in Mission Walker right now, fishing under a bridge that a kind hippie told us that they were having a lot of luck on, even though it's about 300 yards away from where he said he just hooked up with a fish. But uh, we're just dumb enough to try it. So let's see what we can get. Oh, it's taking out, it's taking out drag. Got it tied to drag. Oh, you can go ahead and cut the line, Nick. I think you just hooked a sucker. I'm sure the nice old hippie that told me that there were fish right here wasn't lying. He just left because he had like a important business meeting or something. He had to leave before he caught all the fish. It can be pretty discouraging to drive around all day trying different techniques and different spots and just strike out every time, but we try and keep our spirits up. What do we got going on here? Fishing. Nick said he knew where to get some fish. I trust him, so I followed him. He was right. Best fish sandwich I've ever had. How you, how you feeling over there, Marty? Feeling full. Wish we'd have caught some more fish. But... Some some more alludes to some. Did you catch some fish? Well, I still wish that we would have caught more fish. Stony Creek Wildlife Studio is a full-service taxidermy studio specializing in game heads, life-size mammals, fish, and birds. Our goal is to recreate your trophy in a way that not only makes you proud to display it, but also pays tribute to the awesome animals that we respect so much as outdoorsmen. Attention to detail, experience, and creativity go into every mount we work on. For more information, check us out at StonyCreekTaxidermy.com. You can get a hold of the Total Outdoor Pursuit and Total Outdoor Programming team through social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates on where we're at and what we're chasing. We love hitting the road and trying new things. If you excel at any type of hunting or fishing, whether you're a professional guide or just average Joes like us, and you would like to be part of an episode teaching us what you know, send us an email at totaloutdoorpursuit at gmail.com and maybe you'll be in a future episode. Check out Total Outdoor Programming on YouTube for more great tips and tactics on hunting, fishing, camping, grilling, trophy field care, taxidermy tips, and even more. Plus, you can watch full episodes of Total Outdoor Pursuit and even extras, outtakes, and bloopers off the cutting room floor. Come on, Rock! You're a bum! You're a bum, Rock! Here they come! Here they come! What are they? Be sure to subscribe and join in on the conversations. <laughs> Check it out at youtube.com backslash Total Outdoor. After a completely uneventful trip, we decided it was time to get some professional help. I agree, and we should probably get a fishing guide too. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, I'm Captain Todd Brill with Gold Coast Fishing Company and we're fishing on the St. Joe River today. Uh, we're going to be fishing for steelhead. Today we're going to be fishing with raw salmon skein. This time of the year we'll start out with the salmon skein slowly moving over to steel skein. So when we're fishing with the, steel, the salmon skein, we're going to be using an egg hook with an egg loop tied to it. What you want to do Biggest thing when you're fishing with raw skein, I'll pull this loop out from my egg loop, and let it collapse down on there. And the big thing is you don't want to pull it too tight, you just want it to snug it up on there, but you want it to form, form into a perfect ball. If you get that bow tie shape out there or anything, it'll start spiraling, so if you have a little, any kind of extra, you can trim it up. But you want a pretty much a perfect ball to be setting out there in the water so it doesn't spin up on you. This is different than fishing with spawn sacks, which you would use if you were side drifting for steelhead or fishing with a bobber. But you'll be pretty surprised how well it'll hang on. Yeah, so this was a really cool shoot. We had four cameras running almost the entire day. And then during the editing process, uh, I had a hard drive crash and lost all of it, except for one camera. It was a pretty big bummer. Um, but you know, we were able to salvage it, still show what a great time it was, still show how great Captain Todd is and a couple tips that he gave us while we were out there. I wish we would have had all the footage because it was really pretty incredible stuff, but we'll go out next time and we'll, we'll make sure we back it up. So I'm not a huge fan of being outside in the cold. I wasn't really looking forward to fishing in the middle of the winter, but luckily the boat was nice and warm. I was able to stand inside of it even to get most of the footage.
it was a lot of fun. Captain Todd was a really great guy, a ton of fun to hang out with, got us on some fish. It was just a really great experience. I'm Captain Todd Brill with Gold Coast Fishing Company. We're a full-time year-round charter boat operation operating right out of the port of St. Joseph, Michigan. We fish both on the St. Joe River and out on Lake Michigan for salmon, steelhead, and trout. We also do a lot of family fun trips on the river. Um, if you're looking to get your kids out and, and just have a fun day of fishing on the river. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Check out our website, www.gcfishco.com. I mean, it was great going out with Captain Todd, and right away you could tell he knew what he was doing. I mean, hooked us up into a bunch of fish, uh, unlike when I got with Marty and Nick, and they never catch sh Well, obviously it's not winter anymore, it's into the summer. We're gonna show you a quick recipe on how to actually cook some of this steelhead. Now, you may be asking, how did you keep that fish fresh for so long? What I like to do, if I'm gonna store fish for a long time, is I'll take a big Ziploc bag and put the fish fillets in it and then fill it up with water just enough to completely surround that fish. Pull it tight, try and get all the air out of there so you don't have any air bubbles, and then put it in the freezer, let it freeze right away. That ice that forms all the way around it is not gonna completely prevent freezer burn from happening, but it's definitely gonna help make it last a little bit longer. So the recipe we're gonna share with you today is brown sugar cured hickory smoked steelhead fillets. You can use any kind of wood that you like best, you know, apple, alder, uh, pecan, whatever you want to use. The recipe is real simple. All you have to do is cure it first. Now what you want to use for a cure in this recipe, we're going to use a third cup of brown sugar, a third cup of white sugar, and a third cup of salt. Now an optional ingredient you could add to the cure is black pepper. I'm going to go ahead and add half a teaspoon, but that's optional. It just depends on if you want to add that to the flavor. Just simply mix it together. Once you've got it mixed up really nice, take your fillets that have thawed and spread it evenly on the skin side and on the meat side. And then you want to go ahead and wrap that up in saran wrap and leave it in the refrigerator overnight. So once it's cured overnight, you want to go ahead and rinse it off and get that cure off of there. And then you need to set it somewhere cool and dry where it can actually air dry for a little while. What you want is the surface of the fish to dry enough to where it has kind of a matte finish and when it's at that stage, it's gonna be able to actually absorb the smoke flavor a lot better. All right, so here we are with my $10 garage sale smoker. Hey, it works, so not pretty, but I'll fix it up at some point. What we're gonna do is get the uh, smoker temperature in the main barrel up to 150 degrees. So I've got the charcoal going over on this side here, and uh, we're gonna let that warm up. It's gonna flow through. We're gonna go ahead and place our fillets on here and we're gonna have the actual meat side up, skin side down, which makes it a little bit easier to move things around later on. And keep it away from that main heat barrel over here. You want it to have a little bit of distance so it's not gonna get overcooked too quick. After two hours, we're gonna go ahead and pull the chips, not smoke it anymore, but we're gonna keep the heat in there at that 150 to 160 degree range. And we're gonna go ahead and add our brown sugar glaze at that point. and let it continue to heat until the internal temperature of the thickest part gets to 150 degrees. At that point, we'll take it off, let it cool for a few minutes, and it's good to go. Here we go, smoke stealing. Tastes like candy. All right, so there you have it brown sugar cured hickory smoked steelhead fillets. Tastes great, give it a try sometime. 
Hey, we had a great time with Captain Todd. Really looking forward to getting out with him again. So if you guys ever get a chance, get a hold of Captain Todd, Gold Coast Fishing Company. Great place. He'll put you on the fish, and we had a great time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Total Outdoor Pursuit. Total Outdoor Pursuit is also brought to you by these great sponsors. How would we have noticed that, though, if we're staring at the river trying to pick where to fish? Come on. I think this is a perfect fishing spot. I think this is where we're going to get them. Not, I mean, just the signs the signs around here alone tell me they're fish in this water. Next week on Total Outdoor Pursuit, we're going to be stalking swine with the old bow and arrow. That's right, the stick and string. We're going to slip and slide, see if we can't get close enough to these hogs to try and get a shot. The wind is unpredictable, the leaves are crunchy, and these hogs may just outsmart us.